Suri and I'm currently studying in third year of MBBS. So uh, this is our first video to start with the basics of research and in this video I'd be talking about how to construct a research question using the final criteria and the Picard criteria. So I've always felt that choosing a research topic or question is the most challenging part of your entire research work because in case you don't choose your topic wisely then there are chances that in future you might end up leaving your research altogether. Hence, if you're the one struggling with coming up or formulating a research topic, then this video show will be helpful for you. So basically, uh, what is a research question? A research question is a clear, concise and an arguable question around which your entire research is going to revolve in future. Uh, you must be wondering that from where do I derive ideas to build up this topic. So here are some points that you can keep in your mind while uh, actually pursuing research. First is um, try critically reading all the uh, articles which are published in well-known journals. Well, this is a habit uh, as this is going to help you a lot in your future. Second is uh, try attending various conferences and seminars which are being conducted by various colleges. It helps you to give a broad idea about various topics that are prevailing in the field of medicine. Also try uh, attending your clinics, try uh, talking with the patients, discuss their diseases. This will help you gain interest in particular case and you can then build up your research upon that. Fourth point is uh, try raising doubts along with your colleagues on a particular topic of interest in your classes or lectures etc. Also try talking or communicating with various researchers in your college or outside your college. Uh, may it be your senior or your junior or your batchmate, try communicating with them, share ideas and gain different ideas about research in particular. So this is how you can uh, benefit uh, with these points while pursuing research. Further moving ahead, what are the qualities of a good research question? So these qualities are determined using the final criteria which stands for feasibility, interest, novelty, ethics and relevance. So to begin with, uh, what is feasibility? So this feasibility is determined using five questions. The first question is, are there adequate number of subjects to be enrolled in your research topic? The second question is, uh, is there sufficient technical expertise to guide you throughout? Third question, is your research topic actually affordable in time and money? Fourth question is, um, is it manageable in scope? And the fifth question, that is the last question, it is that are there adequate equipments and facilities available in your uh, hospital to conduct this project? So these are the five questions that you need to ask yourself before actually pursuing your research. The second point is about interest. Talking about interest, you must be very enthusiastic about your own research topic. Also make sure that it interests your peers and teachers, any other scientific and non-scientific community as well. Because this is how you get an idea if it could appeal the audience in future. The third point is about novelty. So novelty is basically uh, how innovative your research question is. And in order to determine, the best way to determine it is comprehensive literature review. Go through various research databases and uh, read various published articles which are in context with your own research topic. Also what you need to have in your mind is that a novel research question does not have to be completely original. Like it can be the one which validates, contests and broadens the previous findings. So uh, validate meaning to find accuracy of, contest meaning to argue with the previously published hypothesis and broaden in the sense to add your own findings to the previous research. Also what you could do is that go through the studies which have controversial results and a weak methodology. This helps you to get an opportunity for modification and refinement. What you could also do is that uh, choose different population, choose different inclusion and exclusion criteria, choose different techniques and outcomes in order to make your research question and your topic as whole novel. So coming to the fourth point which is ethics, go through the guidelines laid down by the ethics committee of your own college and get your ethics committee approval as soon as you can. The last point is about relevance. So relevance is basically does your research topic add to the expansion of uh, medical knowledge. So what you could do in order to determine the relevance of your topic is ask three questions to yourself which are as follows. First is, does it help in uh, improving scientific knowledge? 
does it help in uh, contributing clinical and health policies and does it guide future research so if your research question is able to answer all these uh, three questions and it points towards a significant missing aspect then there is a higher chance of your topic getting financial support from the funding agencies so this was all about the final criteria in order to simplify further there is an example that i'd like to give so um, if you have this broad research topic in your mind regarding women and health what you could do is further narrow down your topic and bring it up to uh, women's health and cancer further what you could do is focus on the main point that is uh, development of cancer in women who smoke and finally build up your question which could be stated as is smoking associated with development of breast cancer in postmenopausal women so this is how you narrow down your topic and apply final criteria and finally build up your own research question further moving ahead with the picot criteria so the picot criteria stands for uh, population intervention comparator outcome and time frame the population is basically the problem or the subjects that will be enrolled in your study and the population is defined using relevant demographics such as age gender geographical location or any sort of risk profiles the second point is intervention so the intervention stands for uh, what will be provided to the subjects which are enrolled in your study so it can be any sort of therapy any prevention or diagnostic testing and exposure that would be given to your patient the third point is comparator so a comparator stands for what your main intervention will be compared to so it can be basically a gold standard which is used in your study the fourth point is outcome and the outcome corresponds to the main result that the investigator wishes to examine and assess so the desirable properties of a primary outcome include being more objective and reproducible being clinically available specific and uh, sensitive and uh, something that can be easily quantifiable so uh, the last point is time frame and the time frame is basically the time that would be required by you to collect the data so finally we apply this picot framework in a clinical scenario so you must be aware that osteoarthritis is a chronic joint disease which affects the elderly patients all over the world and is a leading cause of muscular skeletal pain and impairment there are previous studies which show that um, the conservative management of an osteoarthritic patient includes muscle strength training however there is a literature gap which prevails in understanding that whether a high resistance strength training or a low resistance strength training benefits the patient of osteoarthritis so in this medical context what details as a researcher that you need to gather are first what are the outcomes associated with the muscle strength training second what is actually defined as a high resistance strength training and a low resistance strength training third at what age should this intervention be considered and the last point what are the potential harms that could be caused due to this strength training so uh, as an investigator you should determine the answers to all these questions and gather all the necessary information before actually forming a question using the picot criteria so in this particular clinical scenario the investigators tried to formulate the research question using this prevailing literature gap and the question is stated as in healthy individuals who are about 60 years of age is high resistance strength training more effective than low resistance strength training in improving the muscle strength after 6 weeks so if you keenly observe you'll find that the population addressed in this study is basically the healthy individuals above 60 years of age the intervention used is high resistance strength training the comparator is low resistance strength training the outcome that the investigator wishes to examine is improvement of muscle strength and the time frame the period that they used to collect the data is the period of 6 weeks so once you are aware about the picot criteria as well as final criteria it gets very easy for you to build up a research question finally coming to the end of this video i'd like to highlight on the checklist that you need to keep in your mind for a good research question 
so here are the five questions that you need to ask yourself before actually uh, formulating a research question first is is my research question something that I'm curious about and that people might care about? Second, does it present an issue on which I can take a stand? Third, does my research question put a new spin on an old issue or does it try to solve a problem? Fourth, is my research question too broad or too narrow or is it okay? Fifth, is my research question researchable within a given time frame? and within given resources available in my area. So once you have the answers to all these questions, it becomes easier for you to further move ahead with your work and there is no reason for anyone to objectify on your topic as well. So I hope this video was helpful for you in understanding to formulate a research question and I wish you luck for your future endeavors in the field of research. Thank you.